Okay, we've got about two or three minutes to, if you want to ask each other question, otherwise I will surmise. I, I, I know that we don't have that much time, but I, I, I just want to make a comment and, and perhaps a question to our, um, I cannot see your name well. I'll, I'll be, I'll be. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, so, well, I have enjoyed this um, workshop tremendously. And um, one of the things, you know, when I presented mine about Jews complaining about Judaism, <laughs> I almost felt uncomfortable. Everybody was talking about the Holocaust, and obviously it's, it's such a contrast. And yet I see um, an overall theme in all the presentations here, Jewish identity, right? And since the authors that I have discussed, that obviously I didn't have the time to discuss them in, in help, but they were, uh, some of them were born in Portugal, ran away from the Inquisition mm -hmm. in the 1730s to London, and then they want to abandon Judaism. So one question that I have, a basic question is, is there something on letters? So I, I assume that you specialize yes, on I, 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 will, I will talk a bit about letters in a second. Please, yes. please, because really, you know, it's so needed. And I just want to thank everybody. The, the presentations were fascinating, all of them. Okay, <laughs> Any, anybody else? Any questions? Okay. Uh, I will let me just begin with your talk, uh, since already it's fitting to, to refer to the last one. Uh, actually, uh, we missed you yesterday, uh, because what we talked about in, in my presentation is that uh, historical writing changed drastically in the last 25 years. It ceased to be the history of ideas, the history of politics, and the history of economic uh, major trends, it began to be history of people. And when it's the history of people, when you write a diary, it's not that important if you are exactly prescribing what is happening or not. It's the feeling you give us. And, and I, I just refer you to, uh, I presume you know Joachim Schleer. Joachim Schleer wrote about uh, people uh, running away from uh, Germany in the 1930s and going to live in, uh, in Porto, in Portugal. And the right of the ways that they went to the uh, coffee shops and, and Montero. It's very similar to the one that you can find with really Kohn. Because if you talk about Breslau, and if I were Polish, I would say Wroclaw. This is together with Odessa and, and two or three other cities in Europe. You find it more in, in New York and other places. It's a cosmopolitan city, not only because you've got many groups living in the city, but you've got certain relations between, if you talk about German Jews between West Juden and Ost Juden, and, and all these effects, it's not only what's coming from the outside, also what's coming from the Jewish community, and you've got a big group of Poles living there, and Ukrainians and others. So you could see, in, I think for me, a place like Breslau is much more interesting than a place like Berlin or Dresden, because, uh, 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 that's a foreign. I, I wrote a bit about Odessa, so I know a bit about And And uh, it, it, it is amazing. Now, what, what I tried to show yesterday, and I'm trying to show it in, in the old series because it's the second meeting of our, uh, on the subject of ego documents. I insisted that you came here. The one, one who deals with, not, you're not an historian. Some people came me from linguistics and they formed a conference with got a social psychologist. Because I think that no discipline is free from the others. When you talk about writing history, it's influence from the discourse of literature, from the discourse of sociology, mainly from my point of view from anthropology, but uh, so the use of genre is very important also for an historian because it, it's, uh, I, I compare it to a drawer. 
you've got stuff and you've got a drawer and you know what to put in every drawer. So using what you gave us and what other people gave us helps historians to deal with the person because we want to understand the way he operates. He doesn't operate according to models, to sociological models. In times of change, be it immigration, be it Holocaust, be it whatever, uh, economic crisis, you could see the way that the person thinks, writes, and organizes himself. I think this is uh, important. Uh, the other uh, referring I want to do is for our first lecture in the same uh, section, Galina and uh, Anastasia. I think what you're doing is fascinating. Uh, but I think that when you go and define what is Judaism, there is no definition. Each group of Jews defines Judaism for itself because I, I believe that it's like this in the 1750s. From the 1750s, you don't have one Jewish people, one Jewish religion, one Jewish options, our option how to survive. Because you go to, to so many turmoils. In, in, for me, in, in many senses, Jewish history was a pro-runner of what we call now postmodern society. Modern society, traditional society, is as a base. The, uh, the, uh, nationalism in the 19th and 20th century. Postmodern is people, 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 not your group. But the, you organize a group according to the way you see it. And this is fascinating because you could see that each group is defining its own Judaism. And within the, the Soviet uh, system, you do whatever you want to do to redefine, you always redefine your, your identity. That's what you do. And, and such uh, a project of using the uh, digital humanity system, meaning that you can take and put it a lot of diaries, a lot of letters, a lot of stuff, and something will put out of it, and you could compare, and it, 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 it's, for me it's amazing. I wish I would have it in my, my field, which is, uh, well, I'm doing it myself, but uh, it, it is uh, boring. Now, the last thing I want to say is that when we talk about ego documents, we've got, uh, and we witnessed it in our talk, we've got sort of diary that you write. And actually, when you talk about diaries, you got two kinds of diaries. And I'm talking for, uh, from a uh, historian points of view. A diary write because you must do it, you need to do it, you don't have any, any option but to do it. And you don't mind if it will be published or not. It's helping you to organize your life. And you've got a diary that you keep in order to choose what you want to publish out of it. And those are two distinct different kinds of diaries. And when we talk about diaries, you talked before Daniela on, an, on a diary that she needed it for herself. She said, if I survive, I'll use it to, to, to reconstruct myself. But she wasn't a young woman. She was already in her 30s, as co according to your uh, description. Yes, she was uh, 35 in 1941. So, and there is the other side of diary, which we as historians must disrespect. And that's the, the one published by politicians or others that have got a certain agenda that they want to sell you. And I think that if we look at those kind of diaries in a different way, we could utilize both of them. We could cover out 
what is right in the first one and find out what is wrong in the second one. The second uh, way that we, we, we use echo documents is something you write to send to another one, like letters. Like you write a piece of paper in, in, in the newspaper. But I, I would refer to, to letters. And let me give you my, my experience. Uh, I talked about it in, in the, the first uh, Echo Document conference uh, two years ago. I'm dealing with what is called Agunot. Uh, those are women that uh, the husband went away. It could be that he deserted there, it could be that he, he uh, didn't desert it, but he, he went to work and, and something happened to him. And when I, I'm writing about the Gunot, I'm reading about the Gunot, I have no single letter of a man deserting his wife, explaining why he did it. And I, since I'm writing about the late 19th century, I couldn't ask them any more than their life. I couldn't do oral history. So what can I use if, if I want to, 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 uh, to say something? And I was lucky. In the late 19th century, in the very two, last two years of the 19th century, and the early 20th century, there was an organization called the Jewish Colonization Association, formed by Baron Maurice de Hirsch, and later run by his wife and, and others. And they opened up in Russia 500, uh, what's it called, information bureaus, a woman that her husband left to America, a woman that her child left to America, whatever. They wanted to know what happened to the one that they don't know anything about him. So they wrote a letter to this organization. They were working with organization in America. And they found out what happened to the, uh, to the hill or to the husbands. Now, why I'm saying that I was lucky? Because I found cases that the same woman wrote letter to her friends or to her husband before he went missing. And when I compare those two kinds of documents, you've got different methodological problems in analyzing them. When you apply to an agent and tell him, let me find, let me find my husband. You must give him as much possible information so you can find him. But you're giving this information from your perspective. That's obvious. When you write a letter to the husband before you left her, you have a lot of secrets that no historian can find out. Because she writes, do you remember our neighbor that we used to play with as a kid? I did not know which neighbor is. You, you can't do any historical work on it. So if you, if you were lucky, and I was lucky, to find those two kinds of documents, they complement each other. They not only give us information about what happened, but also a sense of what people felt during this. Unfortunately, this is a rarity. I have investigated 5,000 Agunot, and I've found only seven such women that have got the two complementing. So, Julia, yes, when you do research on, on letters, you always have to remember who wrote it, when he wrote it, and you have to try as much as you can to find information because when two people knowing themselves talk to each other, 
They don't have to give the, the other the information, the other one knows it. They are not thinking about the historians, thinking about themselves. And in this sense, the historical chore is much more difficult. If you got public letters, like the one you use, you could find out what happened to the guy. You could compare it to other sources and to get a certain sense of it. The problem is that if you've got a very individual letter to a certain person and you don't know their preceding history, preceding relations, it's very, very difficult. And in this sense, a diary is a much more vital uh, source of information. And my last words, uh, we are thinking about publication. Uh, I had contact from Joachim Schler, who is uh, the editor of uh, Jewish Culture and History. And also from a good friend of mine who is the editor of Shofar in, in America, Anan. And I, I'll, when I will have some more, I will write to you all and see if, if you wish. Uh, we don't have to publish it all in one place. Do some sort of. Uh, but Joachim, uh, I talk to him. It, it's interesting because he wants to, to focus on methodology. And I think that uh, those of you, and there are many, who talked about methodology, maybe maybe a single issue could come out of it. So I'll write to you more. The moment I know more, I'll write to you and I will talk about it. I hope that nobody uh, is saying, I will not publish. Because in our chore, publish or perish. Without this, we have no life. Uh, so I really thank you very much for attending this conference. And I hope it was as beneficial to you as it was to me. Thank One you. very last question. Are we going to be able to get like uh, email addresses? <clears throat> I will send you all the uh, addresses of everybody else. And so Arvi, could I write to you? <laughs> sure, I'll do it, I'll do it. Yes. It, will be, it will take a week because I've got yeah, another yeah, two rush. conferences, week at the college, so, uh, but I'll do it, no problem. Well, thank you very much. And uh, I, I will uh, upload it uh, on YouTube. You've got a YouTube of, uh, but I first have to edit it and talk a bit about it. So it will take a few weeks, but it will be done. Unless somebody objects uh, to, to the publication. If anybody does, please write it to me and I'll respect it, of course. And thank you very much. You. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye.